it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Movie Studio 17 Platinum, and we're going to talk about two different ways to do vignettes today and some of the reasons you might want to use them. So first off, sometimes if you've got a strong composition to your shot, a vignette might get in the way, but a good time to use a vignette uh, is when you've got a shot like this. This is a shot where uh, my office is not a very awesome place. Um, it's I'm in a rental, so I'm not painting it. Uh, and it's got some distracting things like the paint, like the fact that I got a messy, nasty desk, like the fact that it's the table. Despite the fact that I'm working on framing and everything, I got a small space to do it in, so I don't really have a lot of options for camera angles and stuff like that. So for this little particular piece, I needed to be able to show a clear movement of what's going on while keeping my eye in the right framing and stuff. Uh, so to do that, I ended up getting a lot of the background in, and that's fine. That's not a big deal. I had flat lighting uh, kind of on purpose, um, but that really makes it hard to distinguish what's important. Your eye wants to look at everything. It wants to look at my N64 boxes. It wants to look at the blender. It wants to look at the bad paint job. It wants to do all those things. So a vignette, you can just drag and drop the vignette uh, from here in this uh, vignette folder. Let's remove it so I can show you where it is. In this uh, video effects tab, if you scroll down right here, vignette, there is a quick and easy way to add them. You just drag it to your video and boom, you have a vignette. Now what a vignette is, is if mimicking something that happens in camera, if you have a lens that doesn't quite hit the film or hit the imaging sensor uh, all the way. So something is keeping the light, could be several different things, but something is obscuring the light on the edges of the imaging sensor or blocking the light altogether, like the lens is not the right fit, it's too long or something like that, where light is just blocked. Uh, but you can use that as a storytelling device because what you can do is see how this now, boom, I pop in the center. So your eye stops wanting to look at some of the not encouraging stuff in the corners just by that drag and drop there. Now uh, the outer radius you can funnel, but I want you to note that this outer radius here is designed as a circle. So you're going to be closing in, especially if, if you're not in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. If you're in a 16 by 9 like I am, you're going to be closing in on the edges of here first. You're not going to get the top covered in until you tighten tighten that in. So uh, you can see as you, as you close that circle in there, you're really going to be blocking out the corners. Now this little dot in the center, you can move it around. You can choose where this vignette goes. So if you want a little like... Uh, that's all folks then you you can do that and we'll talk more about that in a second the inner radius though is how um, bright it goes so let's let's drop this outer radius in a little bit so we can see what the inner radius is doing see what you can do is you can get rid of the feathering right there right so how it goes from really dark to normal bright if you bring in the inner radius you get rid of the feathering so this is now just a straight Looney Tunes cut circle there. Uh, so that's what the inner radius does. And the aspect ratio helps change how this works. So this is, you got an eyeball now. You can probably imagine some fun things to do with that. Um, all the way down to ultra widescreen. But this is how, or you can, you can really help kind of fix your framing. So this would be a great like, hey, somebody's looking through a keyhole and trying to figure out what somebody's up to which I'm blending a controller in that shot. So uh, th these are all sorts of cool things you can do with this. This little centerpiece here is the same thing as I was doing. You have the control of it right here on the preview window. So one thing too, if you invert it, you can actually use it to block a shot. Uh, so if you want to make it look like something's obscuring the shot, that can be done as well. So I want to make a note that every single one of these clocks is something that you can animate. So uh, let's go let's let's go back to the default setting here. Uh, I just did that by clicking drop down arrow and default, and I want to animate this ratio. So I'm going to hit this clock, and then I'm going to start at the beginning of the shot, and this is the keyframe I want at the beginning of the shot, but at the end of the shot or maybe about right here uh, closer to the end I want it to zoom all the way in like that so now if we watch it because I have two keyframes because I made that change over here created a keyframe automatically so now we can watch it and it'll slowly encroach the vignette on me as I blend my stuff up but 
that doesn't is that's not the whole story so let's say I want to move where it is too I can go back to this first keyframe go to the clock on the center and then we can go to the second keyframe now we are on we're changing where this the center is going to change as well so when I move the keyframe to my face now if we watch it back you'll see that this slowly not only encroaches on me now when we watch it back you'll see that this doesn't just encroach on me it also moves to my face so that would be how to do like a Looney Tunes zoom out and then you can even have like a fade to black to where it fades from there then bring in your next shot but there's one more thing if you need even more control of a vignette if you're like ooh, there's just a couple more things I want to do I recommend the cookie cutter so the cookie cutter is just a nice little oh I end up using this for so many things uh, because it's a great quick way to do masking and stuff like that it's not um, the perfect way to mask it's just a great like I'm gonna grab the default cookie cutter right here and drop it on uh, it's a great way to accomplish all sorts of things like you can use it to do picture in picture stuff cut things out move things around it's just a nice way if you're just like ooh, I wish I could just cut that part of the frame out boom you can do it so now let's say I drop that circle in there maybe I make it an oval and let's say I add a feathering to that oval and then let's say I make that oval bigger oh look at that now you have a vignette as well um, let's make the oval a little smaller and the feathering more so That's how I used to make vignettes before they added the vignette feature. But uh, the same thing's true with this. You can you can change and keyframe all of these, but you have a little more options with the kinds of of shapes you can do. So if I get rid of that feathering here, you can see you can you have more options of the kinds of shapes you can do. So if you're doing something a little more artsy, like a music video, something that's a little more surreal, uh, that doesn't require that natural look, then this is definitely a place you would want to play around. So there we go. That is a couple different ways to make vignettes in Movie Studio 17 Platinum. I hope that helps you out. I hope that gets your, helps your subjects pop in your future videos. And if you want to see my future videos, like this video, subscribe if you're looking for more. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to my patrons for making stuff like this happen. I got a lot more videos coming. Sorry for the break, but I am back. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.